Hi, and thanks for joining us. In this short video, we're going to take a look at how you can work with road intersections in InfoWorks 360. First, we need to convert the model builder roads that I got into design roads. InfoWorks 360 will only create manageable intersections when two design roads come together. Select the road, right click, and convert to design road. Now, you'll see that instead of multiple points along the road, I have PIs, and I can remove a PI, remove a point, and when I bring those roads together, I'll get an intersection with lane turn markings that then I begin to analyze and work with. It's a simple matter of updating, bringing those points together, and you'll see the intersection created. Now we can look at the intersections. I've got a smaller intersection inside my neighborhood, and then we'll look at the thoroughfare in a moment. Selecting an intersection, the first thing you'll notice is that you can change the design vehicle that drives the design of the intersection. By changing from a truck to a standard passenger vehicle or vice versa, you drive the geometry of the intersection. You can also manually update the radius on a curb return. So if your city mandates that the face of curb radius should be, say, 20 feet, then you can go in and type in that value and we'll update the geometry of the Enforx 360 curb return. You can also modify where the yield line interacts by selecting the intersection, selecting near the yield line, and then dragging that roller bar forward. To further explore intersection options, you can switch an intersection to a roundabout. In this case, it by default uses the rural double lane roundabout, and you can see that that's fairly obnoxious in the amount of space we have available. Let's try a couple of different options, maybe just a single lane roundabout, which while smaller, doesn't help a lot, but I like the mini roundabout. With the mini roundabout design in place, I can look at options such as modifying the apron width or the outer diameter. Changing this geometry would then be reflected if I took this roundabout design into Civil 3D for detailed design. This lets me modify and get a good sense of design directly inside of Enforx 360 before I pass it off to final analysis. Now let's take a look at our thoroughfare intersection. You can see the intersection box and the roads coming together from north, south, and then our subdivision entrance. And we have the same options here, but we can also add in widenings, free right turn lanes, by simply selecting the grip near the curb return and selecting the add widening option. You can change the transition type from linear to a curve tangent curve to help with the aesthetics. And if you have enough room in your median, and it's important that your road has enough room in the median, you can also select near a left turn arrow and you'll be presented with the option to add a central turn lane like we are here. You can also explore other intersection options by modifying the geometry and the turn arrows. In this case, if we want to create simply a right exit only out of the neighborhood, we can modify the lanes in our thoroughfare, getting rid of that left turn lane in, and then also modifying the arrows on the paving. This drives the traffic pattern that Enforx 360 sees. And then by removing or making the neighborhood exit a right turn only, this turns our intersection into an exit right only, and it seals up the median. This is a different way of looking at this traffic pattern in this neighborhood, but it might be something that's worthwhile to consider. Enforx 360 makes it easy. Thanks for watching this video. To learn more, join the Enforx 360 community by visiting the website on your screen. There you'll see forums, the idea station for sharing your ideas, and Infra Tips, where you can learn more ways to make Enforx 360 a more powerful part of your infrastructure workflow. Thanks again.